Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Tall Stephen Paul. I have another project that we're going to be doing. First, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment or a question, share it with somebody, and don't forget to subscribe to Tall Stephen Paul and hit that notification bell. Alright, here we go. So if you saw my video where I made the shelves for my barbecue, I had to cut the boards. If you just do it on the table, cut the board, they fall, of course. Gravity always wins. So here's what I did last time. Take a look at this. So I don't want boards I cut to fall on the ground. I don't want someone to have to hold them. I don't want to stack up boxes and toilet paper to catch boards. Here's the plan. I'm going to mount this like this. There's going to be a gap here so when I do a rip saw across whatever I cut is going to stay right here and of course the original board is going to stay here and nothing's going to fall. Also if, you, if I wanted to drill all the way through a board and not have to worry about going into the tabletop or holding it off the edge um, same thing. I'll be able to just drill right through here. And this is also going to be adjustable so I can have this go out farther or closer. Another trick I learned from my dad when you're drilling a pilot hole you choose a drill bit that is about the same size as the core of the screw so you can see the edges of the screw sticking out. Uh, that way the edges will bite and the screw goes in easy without splitting your board. Here's what I'm doing here. This is the frame, this top board here for the bench. This is a temporary board. It's only in here temporarily. I'm going to take it out. I have a tape over here because even though I have two screws over here, this fell down a little bit. So I wanted to make sure this was snug. This is going to be where the piece attached to my extended top is going to be attached and slide. This will be sliding in and out. And then this is going to hold it in place. What I did was I got my thinnest paint stirring stick, taped it on here to give me enough gap that it slides in and out freely, but not too loose, hopefully, where it's jiggling around. I'm going to put a little faceplate on there. Okay, so here what I did, put another one in because I have this plate here. I had to drill the hole bigger for the screws I'm going to put in, and I already drilled the pilot holes. And then I got the spacer in here too, so it's going to maintain that about a sixteenth. So I got that. One side. And the other side. So now we can go to the next step. What do you think, Secret? She's very friendly because my wife brought out some appetizer snake pie snake steak pieces for me. I haven't given her little bites, so she gets very attentive when there is steak around. Okay, I got my guides done. These are the boards that are going to attach to my extension. They're going to slide in and out. So it will be adjustable. So the next step is to attach them. I wanted my extended board to be the exact same height as here and I kind of wondered how to do that. It's going to be like automatic with the size of the 2x4s because I'm going to take one of these shorter ones, attach it on there, and then it will be the exact same height. So I got those fastened together with whatever these are called.
Now we'll get screwed on to here. Okay, so one thing I didn't think of when I added the, uh, the spacer for the slide to go into the guide, this is down here about an eighth of an inch. So I might need to see if I can put a spacer underneath here. Okay, so to get my extended part of the table the exact same height, I am actually going to shim it with the same paint stick that I used to do the spacing here. So I did a test run, put it on there, and it's perfectly flat or level with this other part. So those will be my shims for each side. Okay, so I did put the shims in underneath here. They are just pieces of paint stirring sticks. Seems to be my go-to for shimming. And when I when I do attach this, it's nice and flat and flush. I was worried about lining everything up. Since these guides are ending up where they should be automatically, I just need to make sure that it's lined up this way. And then just kind of tap in like that. And now I just got to screw these things in. Okay, I put on my second to largest drill bit and it has the angled tip, of course. And I'm gonna just drill in just deep enough, like my, my finger right there, fingernail, so I can get this recessed and end up with a nice flat top. So just going to do a little demo. I have my pilot hole drilled. I'm gonna take a large drill bit and just use the very tip at an angle right there. So I have a little recess right here. There you go. Nice and flush. Hey, hey, we got it done. So I have my extendo table. And if I need to do a rip saw cut or drill all the way through, I don't have to hang things over the edge and I won't have boards falling on the ground. I won't be getting my wife full of sawdust. I won't have to stack up cardboard. All right, so if I'm gonna cut, come over here, pull it out. And where I'm doing my cut, I'll put it right here, and I don't have to worry about cutting out my table. Another good thing about this, you can safely go out that far, probably even a little bit more um, the way it's mounted. And um, if you just need to have a longer table to support whatever you're working on. Let's measure it really quick. Okay, so this is about nine and a half feet, so that's great. And another part about this that I like, if you're not gonna use this or don't have room for it, comes right out and you can put it up against the wall or even put it underneath and you'll be good to go when you're ready to use it. Goes right back in. Okay, time for a little demo. Here we go. It works. No boards falling on the ground getting broken. No wife getting full of sawdust holding my boards. No stack of cardboard boxes and toilet paper. I'm very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.